So for crops like squash and cucumbers, what we'll see is that as those plants get older, they tend to tail off in production. So we'll see a peak in production, and then we'll see that tail off where those plants get less and less productive as they get older. So if we want to be producing those crops throughout a majority of the year, we need to do something called succession planting. So we need to be planting several different rotations of those crops to make sure we have that production throughout the entire growing season. So when you see those plants start to decline in production, it's a good idea to be proactive and go ahead and plant another round of those crops in a different spot in your garden. Now the number of successions that you're able to get out of one year is going to vary with your climate. Here in the south, we can get about four successions of squash from early spring on into the summer and then once it gets really hot in the summer we can't really grow them but if we plant early in the spring we can get about four different successions of squash or say cucumbers and that way we have them through those whole four or five months of that spring slash early summer growing season another crop that we've found does really well when succession planted is okra so in the early spring, we'll transplant our okra to kind of get a jump start on the season. That's because we don't want to wait on the soil temps to warm up for direct seeded germination. So we'll do some transplants in the greenhouse and get those out early spring. But as those plants get older, like I said, they'll get kind of spindly and they'll start to decline in production. And that's when we want to come along and, and be prepared and plant another succession of okra. And for okra, we've found in our climate, we can get about three successions per year. So we'll plant one round of okra, like I said, in early spring. We'll plant another round about now, which is uh, around June. And then we'll plant another round in the fall, say around September or October. So today we're gonna be succession planting some more squash and some more okra. Uh, for squash, we're gonna be planting this sunburst variety right here which we planted earlier in the year. Really tasty, it's been really productive for us when picked at about this size right here. And we're also gonna plant another row of these Tempest squash here, which look a lot, kind of like a straight neck squash. Well, they were bred by Johnny for some improved flavor and uh, we really liked them so far this year. For the okra, I'm gonna plant three more rows of this Jambalaya or Jambalaya okra here. Uh, in the spring, I planted two varieties, the Jambalaya and the red okra side by side and the Jambalaya has been the most productive almost by double. So I'm gonna stick with this one for the second succession planting this year and uh, should be good to go with this variety here. So a few days ago, I went ahead and came out here and prepared everything for the planting process. And I used our FAD system that we always try to use, which stands for furrow, amend, and drip. So we took the double wheel hoe with the plow set and made us a furrow in the ground. That furrow is gonna be for our compost and our drip tape that we put in it. Once we've got that furrow made, then we'll come along and put some good compost down in that furrow. We don't have to put a ton of compost in there, just a nice little layer of compost down in that furrow. We don't fill it all the way up. And then we come along with our drip tape and we use our drip tape layer that does a really good job of laying down that drip tape and covering it up so we can plant directly on top of it. Now for the squash, since squash are spaced fairly far apart compared to other crops in the garden, I don't use the garden seeder for that. What I'll do is I'll just turn on that drip tape, let those emitters run, and you'll start to see the water spots where the emitters are. And I'll just go and poke one seed in the ground on top of every emitter. Now I may come back later and thin those to about two foot, but I like to make sure I get a good stand. So I always plant one seed per emitter to start with. And for the jambalaya okra, I'm gonna use the Hoss Garden Seeder to plant those three rows of okra quick and easy. But first, before we do, we need to make sure we've got the right seed plate for the job. Now this here is our stock number three plate, which is the suggested plate for okra. But even with crops like okra, you can see some seed size variation between varieties. So I've got my jambalaya okra seed right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a few of these okra seeds and I'm gonna put them in these holes and make sure they fit. The uh, hole size here should work great for us. This spacing here with six holes, 19 inches divided by six 
gives you a little over three inch spacing which is a little close but we'll just go ahead and plant it like that and uh, come in and thin if we need to that way we make sure we get a good stand so now that we made sure our seed plate was calibrated correctly it's time to go plant i'm going to go plant these squash here and then go plant the okra with the garden cedar and i'll see you guys on the next video